So here we are this evening, the historical significance of what happened this week still sinking in. And we've been showing you some of the hundreds of civil rights advocates and historic figures from all fields helping to mark this anniversary. And as our David Scott tells us, the hope is to carry on this meeting in the years to come. Scheduled amid other dignitaries of all stripes, the fearsome foursome arrived one by one. President's Jimmy Carter. By appreciating uh, Lyndon Johnson, I never had a chance to meet him. I was just a peanut farmer. Bill Clinton. He sensed opportunity and he felt obligation. George Bush. He made one principle clear for all time. A segregated society can never be a successful society. Barack Obama. President Johnson replied, well, what the hell's the presidency for? <laughs> all in all, an event that exceeded all expectations. We've watched it unfold over the last three days. Is we've had an event of historic proportion. The half-century perspective on LBJ's signature legacy attracted all manner of people and opinions. It would have blazed the old man who loved to twist arms in a room full of people. I think he'd be proud. Uh, I really do. In fact, I talked to both his daughters about that, and they think so too, and they would know. Uh, but I think he would say that risk I took 50 years ago, uh, all that was worth it. In fact, Austin, maybe all of Texas, has never seen anything like it. I think it may be the most historic occasion this state has ever had. Uh, if you think about it just a minute, we've got four presidents that are here uh, on a major, major issue of civil rights, looking back, looking where we are now, and looking forward ahead. This may have been the first summit of LBJ's legislative legacy, but it won't be the last. After all, we're only commemorating the first of his five years in the White House. Still to come, future summits on LBJ's breakthroughs on voting rights, Medicare and Medicaid, clean air and water, arts and education. Quite a list. David Scott, KXAN News. Well, before the LBJ Library Civil Rights Summit wrapped up this afternoon, former First Lady of California Maria Shriver spoke there. She talked about social injustice in the 21st century and how women should become more empowered to do more for their communities. Our Kate Whitehaw spoke with Shriver and asked her how her family history plays a role in this summit. What does it mean to you being able to be a part of the Civil Rights Summit growing up in the, you know, well, the Shriver Kennedy family? Yeah, I mean, it's great uh, for me uh, to be here. My dad ran the War on Poverty for Lyndon Johnson. Uh, he worked for him. Lyndon Johnson sent my family to France. My dad was the ambassador to France. I came here uh, when my dad was running for vice president the day before Election Day, spent my six, 17th birthday here. Uh, so my father was a big fan of Lyndon Johnson. They shared a real concern uh, for the underdog. They really felt that, um, you know, the United States should launch a war on poverty and could lift up uh, this nation. Well, right now, Shriver works as a correspondent for NBC News, and you can check out our entire coverage from the LBJ Library Civil Rights Summit live on KXAN.com. No.